Ladies and gentlemen, is this a book to be read and enjoyed? Or is it a weapon of torture to be inflicted on students up and down the country? Across England, students will be forced to read and analyse books and plays just like this, forced to draw conclusions and make assumptions where there should be none. We should read and revel in these works of art, not kill them dead in their tracks. This brings me on to one particular writer, one of the greatest and arguably the greatest playwright throughout the whole of history, William Shakespeare. Two words, but one name. One name universally recognised for excellence. He is iconic, he is poetic, and he is masterful. He has been translated into 1,600 different languages. You see, to me, William Shakespeare is not just a writer. To me, William Shakespeare is an artist. His words, his sentences are like the brush strokes on a canvas. His emotion, his passion adds colour, adds vibrance. If you stand back and you look at this picture, you can appreciate it because you see what the colour and the brush strokes make together. But analyse it, move in closer, and you do not see what the brush strokes and the colour make anymore. You only see the individual ones. Ladies and gentlemen, when I pick up a book and read it, truly read it, any thoughts, feelings, emotions I want to feel here, not here. And is that not why we read the classics in school? Are we meant to appreciate what makes them good, what makes them great? Isn't that what it's all about? The journey, the journey through a book, through a story. I come before you today to tell you just one thing, one thing. Forget the possessive pronouns. Forget the conditional clauses and just read. Read, don't analyse, because these books deserve to be loved, not hated. I always think that's the first book that you ever read, whether it was Biff and Chip with the Magic Key or Maze of the Mouse or even Wee the Pooh. Remember the sense of achievement that you felt when you finished that book all by yourself? Now imagine that someone had been standing over your shoulder the whole time, and that person, they turned to you and they said, so. What does the symbolism of the magic key mean within the context of the book for Biff and Chip? Forgive me, but this is just wrong. We need to forget the adjectives, forget the adverbs, and just read. Read, don't analyse. Because these books deserve to be loved, not hated. Ladies and gentlemen, is this a book to be read and enjoyed? Or is it a weapon of torture?